Hi there, my name is Mr Cloak and I'm the subject lead for history here at GTS. I'm standing right now in the doorway of my classroom and I'd like to take you on a little visit to my classroom and give you a sense of what history is like here at GTS. So come on in. Firstly, welcome to my classroom. It always looks this tidy and is never ever untidy, which is probably a lie on two counts because it probably looks a little bit cluttered even now uh, and it does get a little bit more cluttered when it's filled with children but the brilliant thing about when it's filled with children is we're learning about the past in a way that's really active and I hope really really engaging. Um, so the first thing to mention to you all is uh, about our curriculum intent. These booklets are the ones that we use to assess our students and they are specifically designed to deliver our curriculum intent and to also give a sense of a standardised assessment framework which they'll become familiar with right when they get into year seven and all the way through to when they do their GCSEs if they choose to take history, which of course as a history teacher I hope lots and lots of students do if it is suitable for them. Our intent is that we are asking a question. We are free, tolerant, democratic, safe and healthy even in these times of global pandemic. So how did we get here? And we're going to be going through a, uh, a kind of a course of history which looks at all the ways in which the modern world that we now live in was built. So in year seven, we start by looking at the Anglo-Saxons and the creation of the English nation as a whole. And then we work our way through the Norman conquest, the medieval period, the religious reformation, and also looking at the controversial birth of empire and how Britain became such a dominant world power. Then going into year eight, we continue our studies by looking at things like the Industrial Revolution and the struggle for suffrage, particularly for women, for example. And then going into year nine, we look at the defence of democracy, the Great War of 1914-1918, the Second World War, and the struggle also for world power in the Cold War following the collapse of Nazi Germany and the dominance of Soviet Russia. Not only that, though, we also start the GCSE course in year nine to give our students a taste of what they can expect if they take the GCSE. And then we uh, carry on with the GCSE through year 10 and year 11. And we hope by the summer of year 11, they feel ready for success and ready to take on those challenges. And then, of course, later study. And of course, if they want to, we want to provide uh, our students with an education that can take them all the way to the most prestigious universities in the country if they should wish to go down that route. So how do we get there? Well, if we come a little bit further through, yes, there is a lot of writing in history. We make no apology for that. History is a written subject. It is about the recorded past. But we try and add flavour for our students who may be of different interests, different abilities, and who might want to learn in different styles. For example, the department is very proud of its artefact collection. It could be something as simple as this, a flying shuttle, which might introduce our students to the mechanisation of fabric production in the Industrial Revolution. Or, if you want to explain to a student how a First World War soldier was trained, what better than to use a replica Lee Enfield rifle in order to do that, rather than just showing a picture of it up on the board. Our Year 7s, for example, love to get dressed up, and so do some of the teachers, myself in particular. Although, of course, you'll have to ask your other the other teachers in the department, Ms Withlicum, uh, Ms Rollick, and Mr Stanier, whether they will want to do it as well. You might be surprised by their answer. Um, so we have a variety of really authentic costumes that we can wear, such as this Norman helmet, full weight chainmail that students can try on and see just how difficult it would have been to fight in a battle wearing that, or perhaps things like our Roman lorica segmentata. Again, students really love to feel engaged with their history and, and feel the weight of that rather than just learning about it on a piece of paper. But of course, our rationale here is always to back up this sort of learning with good, solid and robust written learning as well, because literacy feeds into everything that we do in history. Or perhaps even in the GCSEs, which you might think is just all book learning and, uh, and that sort of hard studying. Well, you'd be wrong. If we're going to learn about, for example, the uh, Operation Rolling Thunder as part of our course on the Vietnam War, well, we could explain what the equipment was like, or we could show to scale the two sides, the F-105 Thunder Chief of the Americans versus the MiG of the North Vietnamese. Not only that, but at various times things come up within lessons and we pride ourselves on being able to respond to these questions that people's come up with, even if they're not part of our original lesson plan. So we're really proud to have a miniature museum at the back of our classroom, so that even if we can't every day take students out into a real museum, we can give a sense of it there, with model displays and even real artefacts, such as this 6,000-year-old Stone Age axe right here. And so with that, we try and give an atmosphere within the history department of the whole story of history, from prehistory through to the Romans and right up to the modern day. And as I say, we are asking the question about how we became a free, healthy, safe and democratic society that we are today. And really, that is the story of history and that is how we want to make it relevant to 
your children and our students.